Here it goes. Lord willing, I'll survive to tell the tale of how Jesus turned my life from the path of jail. Narrow-minded decision-making on my part, but God prevails. We believe what we want to make us feel good. With mixed thoughts, we wonder why we're so misunderstood. Hmm, take a gander at the fact that we mostly run to God when we're troubled and fearful. And in God's eyes, we're like a harlot. So what do we believe? That we need to repent and act good? Is that not how it works to provoke a good image upon ourselves? The act of repenting is not turning from sin, but asking God to change your mind from following this sin because we love Him. And really, <laughs> we should notice our weakness and call upon the Lord for help. Struggling on the inside, don't be ashamed to express it on the out. But because God delights in brokenness, <laughs> Psalm 51, 17. But if we hide it, then how do we progress? Think about that for a moment. Confess and be healed, James 5, 16. Now don't be afraid of that conviction you feel. It's from the Holy Spirit sent by God to guarantee we're sealed. Crazy, huh, how God would use any one of us. We act so special like we're unique, and the fact is that we are physically. But we can look at any one person in this world and have two things in common. We're all sinners, and we all need Jesus. So stop seeking those empty secular promises that will never please us. Sometimes feeling dead is how they leave us. But to seek Christ is seeking life. It will be challenging to trust Him, but has there ever been a time when you did not provide? A good man once said, let's not talk of our big problems, but instead let our little problems know of our big God. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the great, <laughs> the great quote, Uncle Tom. And if you didn't know, I used to despise this loving man, but we're moving on. Yeah. Our Savior provides the path we need to take like a lamp unto our feet. Just remember, God never said it'd be easy, just worth it. But even us in our simple-minded decision-making, choose an eternity to fry. Okay, so God gives us life and we choose to die. Now, if you caught on, that doesn't make sense. It says in Romans 8 that we're subjected in futility, which is uselessness. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. What hope is in that, though? Maybe that one day we would return to the perfection he predestined for us. That we messed up. I notice God inspires a lot of people through me, but please don't look up to me like I'm perfect. I sin just as much as any of you. The thing is, I've truly noticed God gives me abundant grace, just like he would any of you. Just cling on with the grip of seven strong men, and if he takes you to it, just know he'll take you through it. His immense stockpiles of loyal love is indescribable, is it not? Or is there a word we could use to describe God that isn't an understatement? Now in conclusion, let us truly love. Remember, is isn't one who loves a fulfiller of the law, but be more like Christ. Let it be truly unconditional. Don't forget this poem the Holy Spirit wrote through me. Now let's enjoy God's presence and together in Christ alone sing everlasting praise till the end of our days, unless Jesus comes before that. Amen. Awesome. All right.